Lon Seidman and we're checking out the HP Stream 7 today and I've been very excited about this product because this is now the least expensive Windows device ever made. It is $99 but it runs Windows 8.1. This is not some stripped down version of Windows. This has got an Intel processor, an Atom processor. Uh, it can run Windows software for $99 bucks, and that is a great deal. So let's take a look at the hardware real quick and then we'll boot it up. Uh, you've got some volume rockers here, a power on off switch here. Uh, on the top, you've got USB, and that is used to charge the device, but it is also OTG compatible. So if you get one of these little OTG cables, they cost next to nothing, uh, you can plug in other USB devices. So while we're demoing the computer today, I've got an Apple keyboard. I know it's sacrilegious, but I have an Apple keyboard plugged in. Uh, this keyboard actually has a USB hub on it, so I also have a mouse plugged into the keyboard, so you can use USB hubs and everything else. Uh, you just can't charge the device while you've got USB devices plugged into it, because this is how it uh, normally charges. On this side, you've got nothing here, and on the bottom, you've got a little tinny speaker. It does have a micro SD card slot underneath the back panel, so you got to pop the back panel off uh, in order to get those micro SD cards installed on the device. Uh, so you're not going to be able to swap them out all that easily. It does have a 32 gigabyte uh, storage disk on board, a solid state disk. So you do have uh, at least a decent amount of storage. You get about 20 or 22 gigabytes available to Windows. Uh, and then you have probably about 17 or 18 available to you uh, once everything is installed and operating. The boot up time is actually pretty quick. I was pretty impressed uh, with how fast it boots. And as you can see here, it is popping right up. And what I'm going to do now is just plug in my keyboard and mouse so that we can get my mouse pointer on the screen here. Uh, the display is a 1280 by 800 IPS display, and it's got some pretty decent viewing angles as a result. So it does look actually a pretty, pretty high quality for $99. You don't often see IPS displays on things this cheap. So that is a, a good little feature to have that. The screen looks nice. And because it's uh, you know, really compressing a, a screen size that we normally see on some of those 11 to 15 inch notebooks, uh, it really does look pretty nice on here because you have a lot of pixel density in that small screen. The problem of course, is that it's often hard to hit targets on the screen with your finger because if you're in like a traditional Windows desktop here, let me go into the desktop mode, uh, everything is really tiny. So you can see my, my, my Chrome icon is really very tiny, but you can actually run Chrome and it boots right up. Now there's one limitation to this, which is that it doesn't have a lot of available memory on board. So it only has a gigabyte of RAM. Uh, and I really like to see at least two on Windows computers. So now that we have uh, Chrome loaded up, I'm not sure if you can see it here, but we only have uh, well, actually, we have 84% of the RAM or 83% of the RAM in use uh, now that Chrome is loaded, and that's with no web page on the screen. So it's going to do uh, a lot of swapping out. It'll probably slow down if you have more than one thing running at a time, as it has to swap memory off the uh, solid state disk in order to make things available to the applications. But that said, it does boot up uh, pages relatively quickly. I'm just going to turn the sound down. We're going to go to YouTube real quick. Uh, so here's my, one of my YouTube pages, and if I go into the video here, which will pop up, it'll start playing pretty quickly. This feels about on par uh, with what I've seen with some of these other low-end uh, Windows notebooks that we've looked at over the last couple of weeks. So it uh, plays uh, video just fine. It doesn't really you know, get jaggedy or jumpy or anything like that. It seems to be functioning well. So yeah, I think if you're doing you know, things like looking at online video, going to web pages, uh, those things should work uh, pretty well. It's got a quad-core Atom processor, so that uh, puts it in line with like the Asus T100 tablet that I use here quite a bit. Uh, it also puts it in line with uh, some of the other low-end Windows notebooks that are hitting the market now as well. And on the Octane Web Benchmark from Google, we got a score of 5,897 running Chrome, uh, which puts it slightly ahead of the Asus X205TA that we looked at last week. That's a $199 laptop, so it's pretty much performing on the web at least about as well as other Atom-based machines do. Again, a pretty decent web performance and it functions quite well. It's just a little hard to you know, use a Windows device on a screen this small and there's really no way uh, to get the display onto something larger easily. So you can use Miracast, which is a uh, combination of hardware and a software protocol that allows you to transmit the display wirelessly to a Miracast compatible device to a larger screen. Uh, but you don't get like a you know, 1920 by 1080 display. You only get basically the mirror of this, which is not uh, going to look all that great on a larger screen. And as you can see here, we're running a little uh, game now. This is Minecraft, and it is a little sluggish in Minecraft, and I think this is more a function of its lack of memory than anything else. So we're running in the fancy mode. I think if we adjusted some of the settings, we could uh, maybe get a little bit better performance, but it is a little sluggish, um, especially as we get into uh, more detailed areas of the screen. So uh, probably not the most enjoyable modern gaming experience, but I think you could probably run emulation and other things that are going to be a little less taxing on the memory and 
processor. Again, I think if we had two gigabytes of RAM on here, uh, we'd do a little bit better. On the 3D Mark benchmark, which is what I run against all my mobile devices, uh, we got a score of 12,728. It puts it about in the same league as the iPhone 5S uh, or that Asus T100 tablet we looked at a few weeks ago as well. Now it does run Office applications pretty well. I've got Microsoft Word 2010 running here. The page, you know, page rendering is a little bit sluggish, but it's certainly usable. Of course, the only issue is that this text is really tiny on a seven inch screen. So you're gonna be zooming in and out a lot. Uh, one thing to add is that it does come with a one year subscription to Office 365 as part of the deal. So you, not only do you get uh, the tablet for 99 bucks, you can get the $99 subscription for the first year for free. Uh, so that's a pretty good deal as well. So I think if you've got you know, some Word documents to edit or something, you can certainly do that on here. It's just that it's gonna be really tiny uh, on this little screen. So that is the HP Stream 7, and this is a remarkable little device, especially when you consider what $99 typically gets you in the tablet world. You get you know, maybe some kind of no-name tablet from some no-name manufacturer. You don't really know what you're getting. Uh, this is a full version of Windows running on a 7-inch tablet from a major manufacturer with a nice IPS display that is actually usable, and I'm really just impressed by that, that we've gotten to the point uh, where technology can deliver us something so inexpensively. That is really cool. It's got some limitations. It's only got a gig of RAM. You can't plug it into an external display all that easily so it's going to be limited in you know in its ability to become kind of like a desktop tablet kind of thing uh, but for what it is it's really good and I think if you're aware of what those limitations are you don't mind the little tiny screen and you want something that runs Windows that's very portable uh, then you'll be pretty impressed with this the battery life isn't too bad either I haven't really run it through its paces but I think you're probably going to get about five or six hours out of it uh, with light usage and if you start doing things like heavy video playback or gaming or something that of course will eat it up a bit more but uh, overall I have to say, this is a great little tablet, and you certainly can't beat the price at 99 bucks. You can buy you know, four of them for the family and still be under uh, what you would have paid for a PC a couple of years ago. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.